All right, welcome back. Welcome to the DeFi section of this course. If we scroll all the way down here, Foundry DeFi, you can see the code that we're gonna work with for this course. Now, I gotta say ahead of time, DeFi is an absolutely massive topic. Quite frankly, that deserves an entire video of itself. So we're just gonna give you a brief rundown of what DeFi is, what you can do with it, and some of the most popular apps out there. So first, to get started, we can use this site called DeFi Llama to get a snapshot of what's going on in the DeFi world right now. The total value locked in DeFi, some of the dominant apps, and what the dominant protocols are doing. For me, we can look at some of these top five for now too. Lido is a liquid staking platform, which I'm not gonna go into right now. MakerDAO is a CDP, or a collateralized debt position protocol for making stable coins, which is what we're gonna be building. Aave is a borrowing and lending protocol, like an open source decentralized bank. Curve Finance is a decentralized exchange, more specifically for working with these stable coins. And then Uniswap is a general purpose exchange for swapping tokens and different types of assets. To me, if you understand some of these top ones, as you go down the list, you can get more and more intricate or more and more specific different types of DeFi protocols. The beauty of DeFi and decentralized finance is that you get access to sophisticated financial products and instruments in a decentralized context. If you're not super familiar with financial terminology, some of this might be a little bit difficult to grasp, but it is a phenomenal rabbit hole to go down and it is a absolute ton of fun. There's so many cool things you can do in DeFi. And in my mind, DeFi is one of, if not the most interesting and most important industries and applications that smart contracts enable. So I highly recommend you get used to some DeFi. Some great places to learn about DeFi are going to be places like Bankless, which has a podcast that I listen to. Again, like I said, MetaMask Learn to learn more specifically about wallets and safety about wallets and honestly, so many more. Most concepts that you've learned in Web2 or traditional finance translate over to DeFi really well. One of my favorite things to tell people to do is to try out Aave and Uniswap to really see how some of these protocols work. So if we scroll down here, we can go to the website. Same thing with this one, we'll scroll down, we can go to the website here. In Aave, we can even launch the app and we can see what this app even looks like. Let's go ahead, connect our wallet here. I am gonna to switch to, I'm gonna check my chain that I'm on. We're on Sepulia Testnet. If you look up at the top, one thing that's really cool is you can see this little IPFS thing here. This little IPFS thing only happens with Brave, but it means that this site is also hosted on IPFS, right? Web3, all about decentrality. But if we scroll down, we can see we can supply different assets and get an interest rate on those assets if we supply them. For example, if we were to supply USDC, which is a United States dollar peg stablecoin, we'd get 2.45% interest, similar exactly to how a bank account works. The reason that we get this interest is because there are other people who are borrowing these assets, again, similar to a bank, and they get charged an interest rate for borrowing these assets. So if you supply assets, you get given an interest rate. And if you borrow assets, you get you have to pay some interest rate. And this is why this protocol is so cool. It's permissionless banking, permissionless borrowing and lending of assets. Uniswap is another really cool application where you can very easily swap tokens between each other. For example, let's if I were to switch to Ethereum mainnet, I could choose something like ETH and swap to an asset, the Aave governance token and it's a permissionless decentralized exchange and really enables access to financial markets in a much more transparent, more accountable and fair way. And I just get absolutely excited about working with these. For those of you looking to get started here, I definitely recommend trying to use some of these on test nets. Unfortunately, not all of these work on test nets, but I have a couple of videos that shows actually working with some of these that we can, that we can go ahead and actually watch, such as leverage trading in DeFi, become a DeFi quant, Flash Loans with Aave, which is an advanced DeFi tool, and a couple of more. And when working with these, I don't recommend doing this on the Ethereum main chain. I would recommend doing something like Polygon, Optimism, or Arbitrum, where it's gonna be a lot cheaper to make transactions. Ethereum fees right now are too high, and that's why we have scaling with layer twos like Arbitrum and Optimism. One other thing that I should absolutely mention now that we're getting into DeFi is that there's this topic that we're not gonna have time to go over called MEV. 
MEV or minor extractable value or maximal extractable value, depending on who you ask, is something that plagues the DeFi industry. It's something that a lot of ETH core devs and protocols like Flashbots are working on right now. Basically, the concept is if you are the validator who gets to order the transactions in a block, you can order those transactions in such a way that benefit you. There are a lot of different protocols working on mitigating MEV and preventing MEV in the future or making it more fair. And there's all types of opinions on MEV. I 100% recommend that if you're looking to go more into really deep MEV, more into really deep DeFi stuff, you check out this flashbots.net new to MEV repo and check out some of these videos and blogs. They are absolutely astonishing to read. They are a ton of fun to read and also show a terrifying side to the Ethereum world as well. But in any case, the project that we're going to be building in this course is going to be a stable coin. Now, the concept of stable coins is a bit of an advanced topic, believe it or not. Maybe you've heard some stuff about it, maybe you haven't. In any case, we're going to watch a video that I made previously about stable coins and what they really are and what a lot of mainstream media actually gets wrong about them. And by doing this, we as developers are going to have a much better understanding of what these stable coins really are and how they actually work under the hood. This is going to be a tough lesson. And I'm going to say this straight up. It's going to be very difficult. There's a lot going on here. I want you to be absolutely sure to go to ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT questions. Absolutely, in the GitHub repo associated with this course, be sure to use this discussion tab and ask a lot of questions. In fact, if you want, you can even browse around the MakerDAO forum, which is the protocol behind the DAI token, which is what our product that we're going to build is very roughly based off of and kind of read what people in the industry are actually working with and actually doing. Like I said, there is a lot to DeFi and this product that we're making, I'm actually planning on getting audited after we release this course. And this is easily going to be our most advanced project in the course, hands down. Even though we have a couple lessons after this, upgrades, governance, and introduction to security, this Foundry stablecoin project is the most advanced product we're working with, hands down. If you're able to go through this and understand everything in this lesson, you should be incredibly proud of yourself and incredibly excited to move forward because this is a hard project and that's okay. Take your time, don't overburden yourself. There's a lot to go through here. If you've never understood DeFi, Take some time and look into DeFi. If we go to Google, we look up like Learn DeFi, we get a Coin Telegraph article, get some Medium articles, maybe even Udemy, Coinbase. Coinbase actually has a great article on this. There's a lot of places to learn about DeFi. So yes, I do recommend if you're completely unfamiliar with DeFi, pause the video now, take at least 15, 20 minutes just to do some Google searching around, right? Any knowledge that primes you for this next section is great. And there's really just so much to DeFi. The main thing is that DeFi is permissionless, open source finance. And to me, it is the absolute best thing about smart contracts. With DeFi, we can actually move away from financial institutions and products that have no transparency, that don't help you, that have centralization risk. In the last 20 years have been a history lesson on why we need DeFi to take over the world. So definitely want you to do a little bit of research here. So let's do a walk through the code and then let's walk through this video on what stablecoins actually are. 